for today. It's a open stream for all viewers because we've got a Category 5 storm about to make landfall in Nicaragua this afternoon. Where we are, it's clear and the leaves are changing, starting to look a little bit like winter, but it doesn't really feel like it. We haven't even had our first freeze yet. The surface map for this afternoon shows what we call a large prevailing high, 1030 millibars, extending from Utah all the way down towards Louisiana. And that's given us kind of a ridge across the central and western U.S. North of there, we've got the northwesterly flow going. We had a front come through New York and uh, Pennsylvania yesterday produced some severe weather. And here's a look at the SPC reports, widespread wind damage all the way from Ohio to New England. And that was due to bow echoes moving eastward along that front. This is a look at the radar about 6 p.m. last night. Unfortunately, eastern Pennsylvania is in an area of poor radar coverage. But you can see that bow echo coming out of the Harrisburg area by 7 p.m. It looks a little bit more intense, but actually it's coming within range of the radar. We do see discrete elements along that line. By 8 p.m. it's moving into the Philadelphia and New York City area. And then by 9 p.m. we're clearly starting to see some weakening of that line as it moves across Long Island. Here's a look at the distribution of severe weather. This is all wind damage, and it appears we've got a couple corridors. If you kind of look at the patterns, you can see something like that going on there. There's another one there, and a couple more corridors down there in Maryland. We're going to focus on this one right here. Now, here's one storm of interest around 2358 UTC. That's going to be right there. That produced a fairly large amount of damage. And we can zoom in on that and see that's just south of Allentown. What does the wind data look like? Well, first of all, we have to know how far we are from the radar. Now, the radar side is down here in the bottom right, and the radar beam has to go way out this far to pick up the storm. And that's going to be at a pretty considerable range. We can see down at the bottom, that's about 60 nautical miles, which is about the limit of detecting low-level features. And if we take a look at the actual heights on the beam, that's 5,000 feet up. We're not going to pick up any surface downbursts. However, we can just look at the general wind field in the storm, and we can see that some areas are picking up 40 to 50 knots. However, some of that is due to the storm motion itself. If we subtract that out, we get something like this, and we can see that there could be some circulation right there. However, it's actually the straight line wind damage that's most likely going to be a problem. And I think right, right in this area there, we would probably pick up some locally strong surface winds. Also here, southwest of Allentown, this looks like a circulation right there. I do think that there's not really any indicators that really jump out as this being a notable squall line. I mean, there is kind of a bookend vortex right there. You can see the bow echo pushing out right there. That in itself, you know, I'd want to go to more data to see what's going on. And in the surface reports, likely we will have seen a history of strong winds with this squall line. And that's what we would focus in on. And of course, also the storm reports coming in over the past hour. And I do see that some of the cells in here are taking on kind of a discrete appearance. That would be cause for concern. That would tell me that the updrafts out ahead of the line, which we can't really see with the radar, are likely getting some very strong inflow. Also, the rear inflow notch, this is probably a little bit too high to pick that up. If we had radars closer to this line, we could probably see the details a little bit better. So that's one of the pitfalls to look for. You have to be looking at all of your available data. And I guess that's old news. What we're focusing on is IOTA. Major hurricane, Category 5, 140 knots, which puts it in Category 5 territory. There it is, 140 knots, gust to 170 knots. 
That's 160 miles an hour with gusts to 195 miles an hour. Moving to the west at 8 knots, there's the graphic on that. Major hurricane making landfall there in the northeast Nicaraguan coast and then crossing the mountains. It's likely going to produce some major wind damage along the coast and then flooding damage inland across southern Honduras and El Salvador. Here's what we're seeing at the current time with that hurricane moving westward. That's uh, looking to come on shore right about there. You can see a well-developed eye wall. To really get a handle on what's going on, we need to break the infrared imagery into temperature bands like you see here. This is called the Dvorak method. And as forecasters, we take this and match it up to a flow chart, which is based on historical episodes. What we see here is that there is pretty much a continuous eye wall all the way around. Looks very symmetric. And the latest image is going to be right there. It looks slightly weaker than it did a few hours ago when it was about right there. That's about two to three hours ago. So what we're seeing here are a couple different factors. One is the decreased ocean heat content in the shallower waters. Also, there's the infusion of dry air from the landmass regions. And there's also the frictional effects due to the rugged terrain out to the west. So likely we're going to see a decline of the intensity as this approaches the coast. However, NHC is not going with very much de-intensification as it moves inland. By 6C, when it's 30 miles in, it's still 110 knots gusting to 140. So this is likely going to be producing some extensive damage as it comes inland. This is a graphic showing the wind swath of this storm. The track is expected to come into this marshy area right there, but that's just the center line. The maximum winds will extend about 35 miles either side out to here and on the south side over here. The wind down to the south will be coming from the inland areas. It will probably be a bit weaker, and the brunt of the storm, onshore flow coming into about right here, and also the north to south winds as it approaches, that will affect this area here pretty heavily. And we can see Puerto Cabezas, Nicaragua. That looks to be in some serious trouble here. Fortunately, the ground there is not very flat. There should be plenty of opportunity to get away from the storm surge. However, there should be extensive wind damage in the town. Yeah, this is that town there, Puerto Cabezas. But looking at the altitude readout, which comes from the shuttle terrain measurement mission. That looks to be about 30 to 40 feet. Here's a declassified map from the Defense Mapping Agency showing Puerto Cabezas there. Airfield 52 feet above sea level, and there's spots of 112 feet. But going further down the coast from Puerto Cabezas, I'm a little concerned about these little villages yeah, they're still there, and the terrain, only about 10 to 15 feet. I'm not too sure that they have this area fully evacuated, but this area here could be a serious problem. That's right in the track of the eye. But as far as Puerto Cabezas, so I actually think a lot of the town will be okay. It's these areas here close to the beach that will have problems. And then I can see with all these trees here, that's going to be a huge problem. I think we're going to get some pretty extensive damage in there. This will probably take out all of the power lines. A lot of the weaker structures will be destroyed. And many of the stronger structures should be okay, but with some damage. The hurricane force wind swath looks to be about 70 to 80 miles wide. And then closer to the center is where we pick up the 100 plus knot winds. And that's right there in that eye wall. Returning back to North America, let's take a look at the week ahead. Looks like we've got a ridge out west and a trough out east. That's a very familiar pattern. That means cold weather for the northeast U.S. and warm weather for much of California, Nevada, Oregon. 
But we've got this very deep trough digging in there between Hawaii and California. That's got the potential to either shear off into a closed low or bring a very strong trough into the Pacific Northwest. Let's roll it forward and see what will happen. Looks like it's going to be the option of a very strong trough coming into the Pacific Northwest and another one on the tail end into Northern California tomorrow. Then a very large upper level low moves into the Pacific Northwest and that puts us into a trough west ridge east pattern. That'll bring the polar front jet into California up to Minnesota and we'll likely see the Lisi trough start to get established there in Wyoming with strong winds feeding into that from the plains. Moving into later in the week, looks uh, pretty unsettled out west. This will probably pull out into the plains over the weekend and bring up chances for rain. Then going into next week, let's see what happens. Continued stormy in the northwestern U.S., another trough making its way inland. And this will likely have some pretty significant impacts later next week, around the 27th. This is right around uh, Thanksgiving. So possibly some bad weather in the Great Plains for Thanksgiving. Possibility of snow up further north. But out in the eastern U.S. and the western U.S., it actually looks pretty good. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for watching, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.